Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to Milkwater Construction Site for our final tour. Do apologise for the lateness on this one, but life takes over, you know? So, this is the dock we built in the first part. Finally got some settlers around the place now. So this fellow is our fisherman come with ferryman. Seeing as I figured nobody's going to want to wade through radioactive water to get here. Which is our first sight of the uh, settlement. So is Mirkwater so low-lying and basically it's going to flood every few days, I should imagine? I thought stilt houses would be the way to go, so people aren't sleeping in puddles. So with that in mind, everything just about is raised up, certainly all the living areas. There's a few areas that aren't, they're not really living areas per se. So this fellow is a solitary minute man here, he's on guard duty at the moment. We've got an office over the back, we'll have a look at it in a bit. There's another guard whose house we're going to take a look at in just a moment. Here we go. So a lot of these houses are built into the walkways, so they're not the most private places in the world, but settlers don't seem to mind that with their habit of leaving doors open, so... Fairly spartan and basic, but it's home for this fellow, who I believe is just around the corner here. He's got another guard post on his balcony here. I've used uh, yeah, quite a few invisible guard mats for guard posts. There he is. So. This is just something to break up the bridges a little bit and provide a guard post for this side of the settlement. Very little lighting around. Most of the place is just lit with candles and lanterns. They're sort of slowly putting electricity in, but only a couple of buildings have it so far, despite most of the cables being in place. But I did want to leave this truck here and use it as part of the uh, walkway, just because it's got a cool natural feature. So and Now we have a little bridge over the top of it. Well, this fellow does seem to be having a hard time with it. It's the existing barn there that I've reinforced, and our water purifier area. So this lady is in my uh, little head cannon for this place is the wife of the guy who was on the pier, the sort of ferryman guy. They both live in here. That butcher station she's using actually produces food. So. There's actually quite a lot of food coming out of this settlement. I'll have to get around to putting a provisioner on there. There's various fishing points you can see around her, uh, also producing six food each as well. So. Quite handy, and I'd buy a mod as well. A little water purifier. Everything they need to keep it running. And a little bit of shelter from the rotten weather that the usual is down the south of the Commonwealth. That's the bottom corner there with the guard post in it. There we go, there's our uh, first ghoul settler. He's on his little fishing station. Yeah, that guard post off to the right there. There is. Uh, right in the corner of the settlement. Fortunately it's a bit of a pain to position it in there and I can't group select it without taking all the trees with it because see the mods I've got running. So I've had to uh, improvise a little bit there. All these walkways, such as I can, are uh, nav mesh so most of the people will walk around them. I had to use a few rugs there. Once I'd repaired this place I was a little short on ideas for what to do with it because both this building and the other one over there are odd sizes, so I ended up going for a workshop there. Bit of a false floor put in there. The um, warehouse floor's glitched in. One of the last things I did here is put a little uh, caravan station in. There's um, an invisible Bunk Hill caravan map on the ground just in front of the fireplace there. We've got a few tents and seats for any passing traders to uh, hang out on. Uh, fires, actually two or three uh, fires I did by USO, just stacked one on top of the other and then sunk slightly into the ground. Then I went into the walls tab, fences and walls, and there's old stone walls in there. There's a tiny little section of that, just uh, again, group selected and sunk in around the edge of the fire just to uh, make it a little bit more solid. And these tents went straight in with a little bit of uh, spinning around, it was quite easy really. So, into the repaired main building. Again, I'm struggling for ideas. I did think about making a boathouse out of this, but the boats are so large you won't be able to get them in and out anyway. 
glitching aside, so sort of a town hall meeting type place. Raised floors, just a case of uh, snapping the stairs straight to a um, floor piece, and then group selecting using their stair as an anchor and just moving it straight in. Tables from Aslam's workshop decoration pack, and normally you can't actually place anything on it, but I've just group selected a load of invisible rugs onto the top of it just to give it a kind of solid surface that you can't see so I can actually place things on there and there we go head back around the side so this is our Minuteman office and the home for the solitary Minuteman here Fellow, I figure they're probably not very fond of back at uh, the castle, seeing as he's got a fairly sucky job working here. He's on his own. On the other hand, he does have pretty much the only house with any power in it. So, could be worse. This is a little uh, recruitment office. Doesn't seem to be having a great deal of luck with his recruitment, seeing he's the only fellow here. Gun in the corner, a few more files. Spare laser musket. I haven't actually got any cooking space in here, but he's got a little table to eat on at least. Bed over that side. Some spare weapons. Christmas lights, because he's a slightly strange individual. I did try and make this place just a little bit odd compared to the rest of the place, just because he's a, a solitary individual out here. And I'll head back on out the door. There's a little cooking station on the ground out here, which I figure our minute man uses, and anybody else who helps to want to. When they're actually using it, they'll sit on the floor, sort of on the other side there, roughly where we're looking now. But uh, the chairs will give other people a place to sit around it as well. It's a little communal area. I didn't put any walls in this settlement, and a lot of the buildings sort of give that feeling, but I also wanted to leave it unwalled because it just didn't really suit the area. As much as uh, keeping out the mire looks would be a good idea, it just wouldn't have looked right. And I like the kind of rough and ready built out of the trees and sort of emerging from the swamp look, the same as the rest of the land, sort of matches the ground in the area. Quite cool. That is snapped on, even though it doesn't look like it. Very strange. And back around the side to the last house, or the first one we built. This is where our two ghoul settlers live. And up in here, that's a fish gutting station on the table, though, that's actually a little bit too low, actually. But this so lady is uh, also producing food. Another very spartan one. These guys haven't got any power yet either. But probably one of the more comfortable homes apart from the last all we looked at. Around the corner of the little bridge here and back to the start. So I'll quick wander around and have a look at this place in the darkness. So the lighting is quite cool. Just a little bit far away that it's not overly eye-catching. There'll be a slight glow in the swamp, I suppose, but it shouldn't be too obvious. I do particularly like the uh, additions I've made to the boat there. Oh, it does seem to be very fond of that guard mat there. He's got two other guard posts to hang out on, but he seems to spend most of his time there. Looking out towards the main bulk of the Commonwealth, I suppose. Or the castle, perhaps. I think his laser, laser musket's the least subtle thing here. Okay, 
could certainly stand to have a few more uh, sort of fire-based light sources, other than obviously the fire barrels and stuff. But there's only one, two types of candles there, and one type of sconce, and uh, the lanterns, which are a bit limiting, really. Saying that, actually, the light sources I think have taken up more of the uh, build area, for a better way of putting it, than uh, just about anything else. As uh, most of the building went in under a size bar, just under. I think we ended up just over in the end, but as soon as I put, started decorating and putting the lighting in, that was sort of two thirds of another one. Quite sure why they're hanging out in this sort of area. Worshipping the water purifier or something. This comfortable little area, such as it is for the caravan traders. Even with all its electric lighting, this place doesn't really uh, stand out too much. Reasonably subtle. Nice and subtle and tucked away using all the sort of resources they would have available out in the swamp here. So thank you very much for watching as always. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, I'm sure you know what to do by now. Do check out some of my other content. Loads of fun stuff to have a look at. I shall be speaking to you all very, very soon. Thank you very much.